So today I'm going to give you a lot more in-depth insight into putting your uh, 3D object into your live action scene. I'm going to walk you through step by step. So stay tuned. For those who don't know already, I'm actually working with 3D rendering on a daily basis. So if you have an exciting project, just feel free to hit me up. You can find every information on my website. But enough talking, let's jump right into the project. First, we have to go on the field and record our footage. I mean, of course. Uh, here you just have to pay attention to the shutter speed. You just want to make sure that you have the least amount of motion blur possible, so your track is going to work fine. Before we jump into compositing, we also have to create an HDRI, a high dynamic range image of our environment, which we are going to use for the 3D reflections and lighting later on. For this, I'm using HDRI on iPhone. On Android, I'm sure you can find an alternative. I'm setting my exposure to minus and plus 4 EV, which means every time I'm going to take a picture, my phone is going to take a picture four exposures darker and four exposures brighter than my base exposure. When you finish recording, don't upload it to the cloud yet. I'm usually taking it home so I can upload it on my Wi-Fi. So you took it home, you have your footage processed. Here you have a very cool view, you can just uh, look around in your 3D environment. Of course, it's not going to be 100% perfect all the time, but uh, for now, what we are going to be using it, this is going to be perfectly fine. What I'm usually doing is I'm sending an email to myself so I can have a download link and I can just use this set later on in my project. So the preparation is done. Let's jump into the compositing. So this is what I like to do. I have the, of course, the project name. I have most of my projects here in one folder and then I have a project name and I always create this uh, folder tree basically I have an assets folder a project files folder and the renders folder and it's uh, actually very self-explanatory So I created a project in the project files folder. This is what we are going to be working with now so I wanted to find a cleaner time when there are not many people here and uh, I have a clean space basically where I can put my object So yeah, this is in uh, log format. So I first I apply some color correction to it. At this point it doesn't really matter, like we don't have to be very precise about uh, using the correct LUT. And now we just want to track our footage, so for that uh, a basic uh, saturation plus uh, contrast adjustments should work. I mean it's already looking pretty good, but of course this is not the proper LUT conversion. I'm adding a little bit more saturation, so like the tracker uh, has something to work with. I'm also going to add uh, a sharp mask. Yeah, it makes our footage a little bit, bit sharper, as you can see. So it's good for our track. You can see when I disable and enable it. I don't know if it looks, if it's visible on the compression, but if I zoom in, I'm for sure it's, you can see the difference. I'm going to apply a camera tracker, of course, because we want to track our footage. It's moving, like the camera is moving around. So, and first we have to pre-compose our footage, which uh, you just right click, hit pre-compose, and uh, then we want to move all attributes into the new composition and just hit OK. Now we can use our 3D camera tracker. Our track is finished, let's see how, it, how well it worked. It couldn't solve in 3D of course because my camera is not moving in 3D, but we can check uh, how well it worked with uh, creating a solid and then masking yes, down, maybe rotating it so it lines up a bit more with our ground, maybe make it a bit bigger. I don't know, something like that. And uh, let's see how well it worked. Uh, to export this 3D track to Cinema 4D, you just uh, hit File, Export, Moxon Cinema 4D Exporter, and this is going to export our scene into a Cinema 4D file. So hit OK. We also want to put it in the project files. I will call it Track from AE. Uh, first, before we open up Cinema 4D, let's uh, export our footage, just like this graded footage. So we have a kind of nicer base to work with into a PNG sequence. While it's exporting, we can open up our exported uh, Cinema 4D scene, track from AE main project. That's what we are going to be using. It goes until the 130th frame. I'm going to just trim our composition so it matches the camera move. And uh, yeah, we can check our FPS. Everything came through very nicely. It's 25 frames per second. If you press Ctrl D, you can bring out the project uh, properties. Let's import our background footage so we can see what we are working with. For this, I'm usually just creating a standard material and I can just load our footage that we just rendered into the color channel. 
so I will have to adjust my timing because our frame is just fucked up. So I will start it from zero and go until 130, but we will see how many. We are basically 130 frames, you can see that we have 130, so if I put here 0 to 130, we should be fine and uh, our frame range should be working. But we can check how it all works if we create a background and just drop our material on the background. And uh, yeah, you have to first hit, uh, go into the material section, viewport and hit animate preview. So you will see if it moves well with our, our scene. And as you can see, it actually does. You can also change the preview size to no scaling and then you can see your footage sharply. I prepared already, actually just downloaded this from Sketchfab, but I pre prepared some uh, moving models already. Here are two robots, which I would like to insert into the scene. So I'm just going to copy all this, uh, like the entire model. Control C and I'm just going to put it, uh, group it by Alt, by holding Alt and G. Let's call it Piano Robot. And uh, I can hop out from my camera now and just basically scale it down. Honestly, now the camera is not moving. The 3D space doesn't really matter. Like I can put my robot deeper in 3D space or bring it closer to the camera. It won't change anything. But if your camera is moving, like you're walking with your camera, then you should pay attention to that. Now we can start our texturing and uh, rendering process. Honestly, I think this is the most fun part. This is what I like the most. Now, as we have created an HDRI on the scene, now it's actually pretty easy. I'm going to use Redshift for this texturing. I mean, that's standard with Cinema 4D, basically. So to import our HDRI and actually make some use of it, uh, we can create a dome light. And here in the texture panel, we can uh, import our what we have just created by rotating our HDRI. 100 uh, about 180 degrees like not just make sure it's being rotated in the same way as the as the scene is uh, laid out like as you can see now the people are here here in the HDR you can see that it's basically the same background he, uh, now we can start setting up the shaders basically and yeah maybe fine-tuning the lighting and everything first I'm going to bring this plane to uh, be a little bit closer uh, I will put it under the, the robot this plane is going to be our ground that our character is going to be standing on. Yeah, you can see it's uh, now standing on the ground. It's about uh, it's about correct. After that, we can start setting up our shaders. I will go into the Redshift panel and create uh, and go to our Redshift render view. And then let's start the render. As you can see, our lighting basically matches the scene, but I think I will have to rotate it a little bit more maybe we can call this cheating so we have some more light on our subject i'm just going to set up this light so my character is nicely lit and it's uh, mostly matches the scene but now as we are using our dome light we lost this uh, basic cinema for the background in the viewport so we have to apply the background in our camera but now we are currently not using a redshift camera so let's create one if you go here, it actually automatically created the transform this camera into redshift camera. If we click on this object, we can in the background option, we can set our background to override, just loading our image. There we go. Our uh, object is in our 3D scene. When the background is not animated yet, we can change it here in the animation. Settings where we can set the simple start frame 0 and frame we already know 130 and we can already know also know the frame rate which is 25 you can click detect frames here and as you can see our robot is moving perfectly with our scene in the viewport of course it's a bit laggy but you get the point so now we want to make the lighting a little bit more interesting and because now we can't see anything with, from our robot i'm going to add a render tags rs object tag on our floor so we can make our floor disappear but we still want to keep our shadows for that i'm going to go to the mat tab and i'm going to hit override i hit enabled and i'm also going to enable the shadow mat and there we go we have our shadow our model is standing there of course it's not as ambiently lit as the background but basically we have everything now we can make our plane a bit bigger 
and just uh, play around with it so it looks looks as it should. So I spent some more time on getting the lighting look a little bit better. This is basically just trial and error, so it's different from project to project. That's why I'm not going to go very deep into it. Basically learn about materials, lighting and you will be fine. So I have my render here in one folder, in the beauty folder. As you can see, 130 frames. Let's import it into After Effects, import file. It's already imported, but you can see our frame rate is 30 instead of the 25 so let's change it by going to interpret main and 25 what i'm going to do is duplicate our original uh, composition i'm going to hit ctrl d to duplicate it i will rename it to master comp and let's start by cleaning up our our composition i'm actually going to use this footage as my base and I'm going to control X my lumetri color and create a new adjustment layer. I'm doing this so I can affect my base footage and my render at the same time with our lot and uh, I can at the end I can just basically remove it and that's it. Let's drop our render into the composition as well and as you can see it's already looking pretty nice. I mean I don't even know if I have to do any co co corrections. Uh, I'm actually very happy with it. But uh, if you want to, you can just drop a lumetry to your render and then basically set up our black points. Maybe we can set it a little bit darker. We can set our tint. I think maybe minus two looks good, but honestly, I might not even have to change that. Set your white points up and just, uh, you can do it by feel, but also a little bit technically. Uh, you can check, our, check your black points here on the info panel. You can check your black values and your white values as well. If you follow through this tutorial, I'm sure you will be able to come up with something nice. And uh, feel free to share it with me. Yeah. Peace out.